you hear about this a lot in the trauma literature. Somebody goes camping, let's say, and they get bit by a snake and it's a really scary experience and they think they're going to die and they go into full blown, full blown freeze, let's just say, for example, right? And it's a traumatizing experience. And a couple of weeks later, they're at home, they're safe, everything's okay. And they walk into their back backyard and they see a green coiled up garden hose, right? They see it out of the corner of the corner of their eye and before their mind could say to them, or excuse me, before their brain could say to them, that's just a hose, their nervous system, their body goes into full blown trigger, full blown freeze because of that experience they had before, right? That's an example of a neutral or non-threatening stimuli, the coiled up garden hose being interpreted as something threatening, right? The snake from the prior experience. Translate that into working with people and youth. That could be something like, let's say you're an educator or running a group or something like that and you want to get the group started and there's two youth who are kind of engaging in side talk and you go up to one of the young persons and you say, you know, hey, Sam, could you, you know, could you please sit down and uh, can we please, you know, can we please not engage in side talk so that we can get the lesson going? And in your mind, you were like, I'm trying to be trauma informed. I um, am going to come with a sensitive tone. I'm not going to be demanding. And in that young person's mind, who's been through loads and loads and loads of trauma, they hear, sit the F down and shut the F up or else. Again, the neutral stimuli being interpreted as threatening or dangerous stimuli, right? That's That means their system has been zapped over and over and over again. Again, the process of fight, flight, freeze, feign, death, fawn, all of that conditioning, the process of it is protective, but when it happens over and over and over and over again, then it becomes conditioned behavior, right? Um, and so, um, again, somebody who's a lot of trauma, has a lot of trauma in their life, what, what th their window of tolerance is so slim that it's easy to get triggered, part of our role or our goal, at least, as a trauma-informed mindfulness professional, really anybody who's doing any significant work with trauma, uh, with people who, who are trauma-impacted, is, is to slowly build that window of tolerance so that this thing right here, whatever this experience is, which is above the window of tolerance that I'm circling with my cursor right here right now, this is an experience of rage. You can't think straight, right? Um, uh, maybe it was, you know, a colleague or a parent saying something to you over time, that same experience, if we build the window to be higher up here, they'll still get mad, they'll still be upset, but it won't completely fling them into fight, flight, or freeze, which means their brain will still be online. They can think at least and, 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 have, a, and have a chance to respond more skillfully rather than just succumb to whatever the behaviors, the trauma is going to influence in those moments.